During the first six months of 1942, the Allies realized that they were in deep trouble. After the attack on Pearl Harbor, the United States had entered World War II to fight the Axis, but things would not be easy at all. The Pacific Ocean soon became a fierce battlefront dominated by the Japanese. The reason for its initial superiority was the strength of its naval force. The Imperial Japanese Navy remained undefeated for half a year, destroying anyone who dared to stand against it. The waters of the Pacific became the tomb of the Allied fleets, and everywhere there were remains of boats and corpses being carried away by the current. None of this would have been possible without the powerful Japanese aircraft carriers, which caused terror among the enemies of fascism. Don't move from your screen, because in the next few minutes we will tell you everything about Japan's naval superiority in the Pacific War. Are you ready? Let's get started. The Pacific War began in December 1941, immediately after Japan carried out a devastating attack on the U.S. base at Pearl Harbor. The United States, seeking revenge, entered the war and allocated enormous amounts of troops and resources to the east, to fight against the armed forces of Emperor Hirohito. The Imperial Navy was in the hands of Admiral Isoroku Yamamoto, the architect of the initial attack on the Americans. It was this soldier who advocated redesigning the general strategy of the Japanese ships, which until then had only been prepared for a passive defense of their territory. Now, instead, they went on the offensive, changing their tactics and putting the Allies in check. The Japanese Navy was at a numerical disadvantage, as the country's industry was not capable of producing large numbers of warships. Enemies had more units at sea, so Admiral Yamamoto searched for a way to turn this to his advantage. To do this, he planned a limited-range war, in which the Japanese would attack specific targets in the Pacific and then establish a defensive perimeter around them. Thus, they would counteract the Allied attacks and, once they gave up their attempts, they would negotiate with them to agree to Japan's permanent occupation of those places. The key to the strategy resided in the formidable Kido Butai, which was what all the aircraft carrier divisions were called. To understand Yamamoto's plan, we must remember that an aircraft carrier is a warship that serves as a mobile base, since it is capable of moving through the sea carrying aircraft on its deck. Usually, it is the flagship of a fleet, and while it is sailing, other ships position themselves around it to provide cover and protection. The heads of the Imperial Navy, however, brought a revolutionary change to this scheme, forever altering naval battles. The idea was as simple as it was effective, and consisted of placing several aircraft carriers in the same marine division. In this way, instead of the fleet having a single aircraft carrier, there were up to six sailing together, surrounded by their guard ships. This is what made the Kido Butai so dangerous, and tactically so sophisticated, that it was light years ahead of the U.S. Navy. However, organizing an operation of these characteristics, with multiple aircraft carriers at the same time, required precise coordination. This was made difficult by the fact that Japanese ships were equipped with poor quality radios, which often stopped working right at the crucial moment of battle, leaving sailors blind as war raged around them. The troops had to be trained to deal with any unforeseen event of this type, and special attention was paid to the training of the pilots. They were, ultimately, the ones who operated the aircraft, and once a squadron took off, the fate of the battle was left in their hands. The Japanese Navy was tremendously selective with its pilots, to the point that, of every thousand men who applied for the position, only 70 managed to pass the exams. The quality of men was favored over their quantity, something that ultimately paid off, since the Japanese bombers wreaked havoc among their enemies. On the other hand, Japan was at the forefront of aircraft carrier design, which was considered the best in the world at the time. Two of the most famous were the sister ships Shokaku and Zuikaku, built just before the outbreak of World War II. Looking at their features, it becomes clear why they were so powerful. They had a length of 257 meters, a beam of 26, and a draft of 8.8. .8. They were powered by four propellers and four steam turbines, which allowed them to move at a speed of 34 knots, that is, 63 kilometers per hour. 
Each carrier could hold a crew of 1,660 men and, more importantly, could carry up to 72 aircraft. In addition, it could carry another 12 spare planes, disassembled but ready to be rearmed and go into action. The Shokaku was armed with 16 127mm guns and 70 AA 25mm guns. It had modern armor strong enough to survive several American attacks with superficial damage. Admiral Yamamoto's tactic of attacking multiple carriers simultaneously allowed him to conquer Malaya, the Philippines, Wong, Wake, and a number of other Pacific islands. Confident in the power of their fleet and their bombers, the Japanese turned towards the Indian Ocean in April 1942, with the aim of driving away the British ships stationed there. The operation was a success, resulting in the destruction of the light aircraft carrier Hermes, the heavy cruisers Dorsetshire and Cornwall, and 23 merchant ships. Although the bulk of the English fleet survived, it was forced to abandon the Indian Ocean, giving Japan the space to organize and reinforce a defensive perimeter. However, from this moment began the decline of the Imperial Japanese Navy, whose achievements were diminishing while their rivals took the initiative. The reason for its exhaustion was simple, it had expanded beyond its reach, and it no longer had enough strength and resources to control and protect so many territories. In the first week of June 1942, the decisive Battle of Midway was fought, in which Japan suffered a catastrophic defeat. The four Japanese aircraft carriers that participated in the battle were destroyed and they lost more than 3,000 men. The Japanese never managed to recover, since their industry was not in a position to replace the aircraft carriers. On the other hand, many of the deceased were their best pilots who had been training for years, so they could never be replaced by personnel of the same efficiency. The following year, Admiral Isoroku Yamamoto decided to tour the South Pacific to inspect the state of the bases and raise the morale of his troops. It was then that the Americans launched Operation Magic and dealt a second, devastating blow to the Japanese. The objective of the operation was to hunt down Yamamoto while he was traveling in his personal plane. On the morning of April 18, 1943, the Admiral's aircraft was shot down, crashing in a jungle. When the Americans inspected his remains, they found the head of the Imperial Navy shot dead in the face. The glory days of the Japanese Navy had come to an end. We have reached the end of the video and we want to ask you, what do you think was the most powerful Navy of World War II? Leave us your answer in the comment box below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to learn about many more military events that left their mark on history.